And I'm just going to show you how to draft a collar and revere from the bodice block pattern. So a lot of neckline on the blocks around. We will need to square this off because the collar and revere sits on the neck and it comes around here. Okay, and then you're, you're, you've got your roll, and then this line is your revere, and that's your collar, like this. Okay, and then the shoulder comes out, and then obviously this here is the break line. Yeah, and this here, okay, that'd be your revere, and that's your collar. So this notch here, these are obviously style decisions, quite often they're similar sizes but one might be a bit more extended on the revere or the other way round. Um, but these are, you've got your high miss here, that is the stand, the built in stand, the collar stand and that's how high it sits up your neck there. So there are the key points, obviously you've also got a wrap, that's your centre front where your button sits, buttons through, so your buttonholes actually on the outside and the other ones underneath and then it wraps around your neck like this and that's the same on that side so you can see that the V is a bit higher than where the actual point or break line there is so these is looking um, at using your front block and all the lines you want and this is just starting obviously these are first draft patterns you have to twirl them to test them because you can't always get them right first time so we'll need to add our wrap on. Start with adding our wrap. I want a four centimetre wrap. So I'm going to add two centimetres past the centre front. That's the centre front. And I'm working net, no seam allowances. Now all these design decisions, this is your shoulder point. So where your break line is going to be, this here, this is a design decision, how low you want that neckline to be. It could be all the way down to the waist or it could be a high one. So you need to look on the stand or the body and make those decisions. <coughs> now when I draft um, mine, I only go 1.2 past the shoulder, 1.2 centimetres or half an inch from that neck point out. That's just where I start my draft for my line just what I've always found works but I want my collar stand so the height here like um, on the inside of a two-piece collar you have the actual collar stand this is all grown on I want that depth to be two and a half centimeters so I'm going to draw that there that's, so that's my stand there but just I find when I do my drafts that it works just extending that past 1.2 centimeters so this here is my break line So we need to think about the style of our jacket, how we want it to look. Um, I said that it won't be a round neck, it'll be squared off. But I'm going to start by drafting it. I'm going to do fold, just so you can see the fold line, along that break line. So where that break line is. And I'm going, so this is where you could put it on the body. So that is just folding along that break line that we've drafted. You can see, I've just folded on that break line. And I want to look, there's my shoulder here. You know, how do I want that collar to look? Where do I want that to be? How far out do I want it to be? I can see that that's if I kept it with just the wrap. So I want to make mine a little bit bigger, I think. And this is the point where it goes to. So I'm just going to, and what angle do I want it to be? You know, I know I've got my centre front line, so I could use my grids, line them up, and that would be my centre front here. Obviously it will be wrapped off, so it's starting from this point, my jacket. What angle do I want that collar and revere to be at? You know, what sort of angle do I like it? Do I want it to be a right angle to the, to the front? or a bit more of a different angle. I'll start off with a right angle and I want it to come out that sort of seven millimetres, maybe a centimetre and just blend it in nicely to that break point. How big a notch do I want that to be? A small, really big notch, really small notch. 
I'll go about halfway. And the length here, do I want that collar to extend a little bit, be a bit more exaggerated? These are just all design decisions that you need to make when you're doing your collar. What do I want it to look like? What shape do I want it to be? And then it will extend off and go round. So you want to use your tracing wheel and then just trace that line through so that we can see it with important lines, part of our pattern drafting and then we can unfold that. In the tracing wheel you can just see the dots, you can feel them coming through. If you're using the paper obviously you can see the lines as well. So that is going to be drawn. Yeah. And I'm going to continue that into the neck a bit further and then I'll continue trace that through my collar pattern. Now I know that I've got a two and a half centimetre depth of the stand so my collar has to be at least two and a half centimeters because the collar if that's your neck here the collar goes up and over the back so you need that that's the stand there that goes round that's the back neck you a grown on collar stand okay and that's the collar that comes down here so this is the depth so you can see that this has to cover the back that's your neck coming up here so it needs to be at least the two and a half to cover it. So again, you might exaggerate it, but if you're going to make it bigger, then this edge needs to be opened more for it to flare out to sit flatter. So I've gone three centimetres. It's a bit of a compromise, isn't it? And then I'm going to just make that nice shape coming from my draft. You can use your curves of your pattern master, whatever tools you've got if you like to use it like that and then that's my shape of my collar I'm going to change all this because I'm going to slash it open but the important bit I've got to draft now is from this neck point and I know that this here is going to be my break I want to make sure that it doesn't come out past my collar I don't want my neck to come past so it has to be inside that um, and I can just square it round take it so it's a nice well, you have to consider you've got your back neck coming round here so you want a nice curve bring it round and then obviously that's a squared off neckline okay. so this square line here is called the gorge line that square line that comes out, or the gorge seam, sorry. All right, and then this is the break line, and these are your your traced off colours of the collar and revere here. Taking it down to that break point. Yep, as we can see here. So this will become the body, and this will become the collar when we trace them off. So we've got now our front bodice and that's here along here this will have a notch at the point and then that revere extends and then you come down to that break point which have another notch and continue with your pattern all the way down and the star lines and obviously this is just all part of your shoulder you might have something with princess seams but this is your pattern for the front and just remember this and that's your net pattern so you'll trace that off and add seam allowances and then you'll also make a facing from it um, which will come around here for the front facing um, and add all your seam allowances now I do one centimetre all round the neck and then I step it down here to quarter of an inch seven millimetres so I have a little bit of a notch there and then all those um, facing edges are seven millimetres it's just easier it's just what we use in industry but if you want to use one centimetre or one and a half just remember these key notches and you'll be having to snip things down now we need to know what the back neck measurement is so if you've got your block here you need to measure your back neck I've got 8.3 on mine because that's important when we're doing this now I I 
know how much I've sort of got to slash this open. So there's a couple of ways that we can draft this. We can sort of guesstimate slashing this open, or you can just draft it up the measurement of the back neck and then slash it open. So the way that I like to calculate it is just, and again, these are just first drafts, but if it's not a particularly deep collar it works you otherwise would have to slash this lead and edge open a little bit more so I said that my back neck was 8.3 okay and that's my break line and then I'm going to add the um, sorry <laughs> that's um, add the roll on um, and then I'm going to from this here I, I just have worked quite a while from this break line I'm going to actually move that in another 2.5 it's just adding that length so you don't have to do it this way but I'm, I'm going to do an overlay and my collar is going to come round and up round here it's just how I work so I'm going to from this point and from my design decision on my where my gorge seam ends I'm going to bend that seam round, which is the same as if I drafted it and slashed it down till that meets that point there. Okay, and then I need to make sure, obviously, that this measurement here is the same for the front neck. So I would measure on this line, doesn't matter if you're metric or imperial, whatever you work best in, so that's 9.2, so this the blue one is the um, garment and this other line I'll make yellow and that's the collar so I'm that all important notch for the shoulder and then this is going to come up here and then this is going to come up here all right. and then I've just bent this seam round and I need to make sure that that's my neck measurement which is 8.3 from my notch and where that ends is the centre back neck, and that's approximately two and a half centimetres down from the brake line plus two and a half. So that's my brake line, and then this is the stand, this depth here, 2.5 centimetre stand. And then I just know that, guesstimate on how much I'm slashing it tends to bend it around. And then I'm going to do that at a right angle. So I need my 2.5 stand and then I need my 3 centimetre collar depth and then I just need to keep this measurement the same and then work out what my collar is going to look like. This is what you want to be drafting sort of on the stand and um, do a rough toile and then make some more design decisions um, on the toile. You, you never get collars right first time, they never work first time. So you really need to play around with it and then you might need to slash to the neck and open it out more or tighten it a little bit. You could, if you find that bit confusing, just take that up and um, the back neck and here and then on the stand slash it and then you'll just find it bends around to about this position anyway. So this is my collar draft here. Okay, so that's my collar, that's my under collar, and then that's my front. And then you can see the overlap there, obviously when that's sewn together, that's what gives that edge. And then what you'll do is trace off this, because this is obviously just the draft. So you trace off the blue for the, uh, the, the main body, add seam allowances, so I would do quarter of an inch and then step it to one centimetre. Okay, all the way round, all your annotations, straight grains, um, interfacing, and then you can draft your um, facing, your front facing, and it just takes this line here and then around there, and that becomes your front facing pattern. And remember that will be the same for your back neck facing pattern. So when you sew and attach your back facing you want to make sure that that's the same at that point there. That becomes your back neck facing pattern piece. It's a direct trace. And that's how you calculate that. And then your under collar is the yellow. And again, 
I would this would be on a fold or an under collar could have a seam. Under collars are sometimes cut on the bias, which is the 45 degree. So that is the under collar draft. And that's the front draft. Um a uh, 45 degree just to help it roll. You sometimes see in suit jackets they're in like a felting fabric, something that's slightly different. But otherwise just do an, an interface on uh, outerwear both of the collars um for uh, this is more outerwear because it's a collar and revere. Um, if it was for a shirt, then you'd normally just have the top collars that are interfaced. The ones that no, it would be the under collar, beg your pardon, because it rolls over. Um, it's the one that's shown on the outside that you want to have the interfacing on. Um, when you're then creating your top collar, um, you need to add roll to the outside collar edges. Okay. And so when you've got this pattern piece here, where you've got it like this, and then that's your neck band, you would have, obviously, that's the gorge seam. This is the neck. That would be a centre back fold. OK, and then you add your roll onto those finishing there, onto those edges there, just a couple of millimetres. And it, it just helps roll it onto the inside, so the top collar has the roll added onto it not at that because that's a fold line or you could have a seam on the under collar and a fold on the top collar um, and then that's your drafting for the collar and revere